Now, as you're browsing the internet, you might come across a website like this. There's a CAPTCHA that requires you to verify by going into Windows R and pasting whatever was copied into your clipboard. It might seem like an authentication code, but it's actually a command to install malware on your computer. So don't run this. But you might be wondering, how can a simple bunch of characters infect your computer with malware? And to understand how that is, we need to understand Base64 because that's what this bunch of characters represent. So let's say I want to run a command to print hello. Now I know all of you may not know programming, but this is just a command to the computer that says show hello on the screen. Pretty easy to understand, right? But now when we encode it, the same bunch of characters gets transformed into this which to you looks like gibberish, but to the computer, it looks exactly the same as what you saw above. So the computer is going to read this and still print hello. Because Base64, as the name suggests, is just a different character system, a different number system. So numbers you're familiar with, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, is what we call the base 10 system. And that's because everything repeats after 10. As you notice, after nine, there is no new number. Well, you would type after that is one zero and then go back to one one, one two, and everything repeats. Similarly, binary, the machine code number system is a base two or the powers of two. So you have zero and one and that's it. And then you would have one zero, one one and so on. Base 64 similarly is just a representation system where 64 is the base and there's 64 unique characters. So it starts with uppercase A, goes through all the alphabets, lowercase, the numbers, and then some of the symbols on your keyboard and uses equals for padding or space. And that is what this malware is using. It's using the base64 system to pass a command onto PowerShell, infect your computer. But what is this command? Well, let's find out. So I've got the whole thing copied over here. So I'm just going to copy and paste this into the decode section. And as we decode it, you can see this is a link. It says MSHTA and then a link. Now, MSHTA is a system process that's used to execute HTML applications. And so by using this command hidden as this base64 string, it is getting your PowerShell to download and run an HTML application on your computer. Now, if you actually go ahead and try to download this payload, this is what you get, vectorfree.exe. So I went ahead and analyzed that in any DAW run. And if we hit play, you can see what happens. You wouldn't really see anything on your system but if you look at the processes, what would happen is once this is executed, it's going to run service host, another system process, but it's gonna be used to connect to the command and control infrastructure. And if we look at the threat section, it is connecting to a well-known Luma Stealer domain. Luma Stealer, of course, is an info stealer malware that is going to run on your computer and collect all of your browser session tokens and pass it on to the hackers who will then simply log into your accounts directly, change the password and take over. So this is an interesting new delivery method for malware pretending to be fake CAPTCHA. Luma Stealer, of course, is one of the most infamous info stealers out there right now. Luma Stealer and Redline, they're all over the place. They're in game installers, they're in cracked software, they're in fake job applications, and now they're also in fake CAPTCHAs. And the trickiest thing about malware like this is there's really no warning. There's no indication that you've even run malware. So you could run it, use your computer, not know anything has happened. And then a week later, you could have your account hacked, say your YouTube account or something, you try to log in and then you realize, damn, my account's been hacked. And you wouldn't even know that it's because you were infected by this in info stealer malware a week ago or a month ago, because they don't leave a lot of traces on your system. They don't alert you to their presence. So needless to say, never type and run anything in your run window based on what a website recommends or for any kind of verification. That's not how verification works. And don't assume that if a string of random characters is being pasted, it doesn't mean anything. There are a lot of encoding mechanisms, a lot of number systems and codes that your computer can understand that you may be oblivious to. By the way, the dash EC stands for the encoding
encoded command. But an average user is just not gonna know. They might think, well, here's a random string of characters, looks like some kind of verification code, let me paste it in. Now, on the other hand, if you're interested in digging into malware, you wanna get into malware analysis, perhaps you like what I do on this channel and you're like, I wanna do that too. You might wanna consider Any.Run, who's also the sponsor of this video. It's a pretty powerful sandbox platform for you to detonate any malware sample and observe what's happening without having to launch your own virtual machine, load up a bunch of tools. It's a quick and easy way to do it. And it's even got its own AI that can flag the malware. So for example, here, you can see that it is detected as Loomis Dealer based on the websites it connects to. And you can see it has a threat section where it tells us that SVC host is connecting to a domain, command and control infrastructure by hackers. Now you can get any doll run free for non-commercial use, but they also have a Black Friday sale referred to the description for details, and you can get one of the enterprise plans for a really good price. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found it useful. Please like and share it if you did. Thank you all so much for watching. This is Leo, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.